What's up everybody? I'm Rob. I'm Rishon. And, and this, this is Learn, Learn Hustle, Hustle Grow. Grow. If you are interested in all things real estate, personal finance, and travel, this is the place for you. In this video, we're going to talk about our visit to El Calafate, Argentina, aka Patagonia. We arrived in El Calafate, Argentina from Buenos Aires. Our goal was to conquer the icebergs. We stayed four days and three nights. Upon our arrival, we quickly discovered that it was a windy little town. <laughs> yes, coming from Buenos Aires, uh, where it was nice and warm or hot, uh, we need to pull out our jackets again. When we began our 2019 travels, our goal was to chase summer. What we quickly realized was that summer is not the same everywhere. The weather in El Calafate was approximately 50 degrees Fahrenheit, um, and that's their summer. So you might want to bring a jacket. Guys, the wind chill factor in El Calafate makes that 50 degrees Fahrenheit feel more like 40 degrees. We were prepared by bringing our puffer coats and windbreakers. We absolutely needed them. And beanies, by the way. We went back and forth on the hiking shoe decision because we never needed them before, but we definitely used them, especially in El Calafate. And should you find that you have forgotten any of these items, there are certainly stores. Actually, El Calafate is a tourist town with nothing but shops. However, you should definitely prepare to spend a little money. In addition to retail shops, Main Street is lined with restaurants, cafes, and ice cream parlors. We made sure we took advantage of all of the above. Plenty of empanadas. Oh, and a side note for all you animal lovers out there. El Calafate had more stray dogs than we've ever seen. Uh, they weren't uh, aggressive dogs at all. It's like they were part of the family and the make of the town. Uh, they were pretty sweet, but it's just kind of weird seeing so many of them uh, and they're always coming to your table, you know, basically begging for food. <laughs> it, honestly, it was clear that the dogs have been well treated because they were not afraid of people no. in the least bit. <laughs> right. So, dog lovers, this is your town. Transportation. You will need transportation from airport to the town area. We pre-arranged transportation online, but there are many, many taxis and transportation services at the airport when you get there. It took us about 24 minutes to get to town uh, from the airport, just so you know. Now, renting a car is always an option. We chose not to because our stay there was so brief. However, we noticed that there were several people who were driving through the town and it would have come in handy when we wanted to leave the touristy area to look for a Walmart or a larger store for small items that we'd forgotten and didn't want to pay the increased prices for. Now, on to the good stuff. The glaciers. They picked us up at uh, around 8 a.m. and we got on a bus we drove to the National Park uh, about an hour away. I right. think it took us about 90 minutes to get okay. there. 90 minutes. Um, then we hopped on a ferry and we went from the ferry just a, just a few minutes, uh, like a uh, 20, 30 minute 
Yeah, uh, the ferry ride in and of itself was amazing. Yeah. We were actually so excited on the ferry, we began taking pictures. Yeah, <laughs> like we just weren't gonna get to the glacier. We were right. taking pictures all the way over there. Everybody's fighting for uh, the small, you know, long distance glacier shots. But when you get there, there's no need because it's so large, so beautiful, so colorful. I mean, it was it was amazing. It was my favorite tr trip to date. And uh, the minute we stepped off the ferry, we were glad we had those hiking shoes. Yes, yes. Don't forget the hiking shoes. Uh, so we also had to hook up uh, the clamps on the bottom of your feet. feet. I'm not sure exactly what they're called. Crampons, uh, I believe. Ah, crampons, okay. Uh, and that was for our uh, journey up the hill. While you do have to be careful going up the glaciers, watch your step to make sure you don't fall. This is an amazing photo opportunity. Yes. Because of the incredibly white glaciers, we chose to wear colorful clothing in order to make our pictures pop. Uh, this uh, hat is just one example of an opportunity to add color in your photos. Yes. Uh, also, as far as the cameras go, you will be, uh, everyone, everyone wants to film, but you're required to wear your gloves. So, uh, going uphill where you might slip and have to put your hands down and holding the camera you definitely need to be careful careful with that so so the trek itself took about two hours from start to finish like i said it, it was amazing guys it's just once in a lifetime opportunity um and a little bit of exercise personally <laughs> indeed it was definitely exercise because i was uh quite winded by the end of it so our guide also mentioned that this is one of the only places in the world where you can see glaciers and lush green mountains opposite of each other. It was amazing and you will definitely see it in our photos. The Andes Mountains run through South America. One cool thing was uh, during the trek I had an opportunity to drink directly from the uh, glaciers. And they say that it has no minerals in the water and you could definitely taste the difference. It tasted like a dry type of water, like, I don't know, dry wine, but it was pretty cool. And, but it was freezing cold off of the ice. And we celebrated the end of the trek with a piece of chocolate and a glass of whiskey. Oh yeah. So if you guys want to see our incredible adventure, check out our photos on learnhustlegrow.com. We'll be sure to drop a link below. Yes. That's our experience. Have you been to Patagonia? If so, please don't hesitate to share your experience. Don't forget to add your questions or comments below. Thanks for stopping by. Until next time, this, this is Learn, Learn Hustle, Hustle Grow. Grow.